Hereward the Wake was an 11th-century leader of local resistance to the Norman conquest of England. Hereward's base, when leading the rebellion against the Norman rulers, was in the Isle of Ely, and according to legend he roamed the Fen, covering North Cambridgeshire, southern Lincolnshire and West Norfolk, leading popular opposition to William the Conqueror. Hereward is an Old English name, composed of the elements here, army, and weird, god. The epithet, the wake, is recorded in the late 14th century, and may mean, the watchful, or derived from the Anglo-Norman wake family who later claimed descent from him. Life and legend, family partly because of the sketchiness of evidence for his existence, his life has become a magnet for speculators and amateur scholars. The earliest references to his parentage, in the Jester, make him the son of Edith, a descendant of Oslac of York, and Leofric of Bourne, nephew of Ralph the Staller. Alternatively, it has also been argued that Leofric, Earl of Mercia and his wife Lady Godiva were Hereward's real parents. There is no evidence for this, and Abbot Brand of Peterborough, stated to have been Hereward's uncle, does not appear to have been related to either Leofric or Godiva. It is improbable that minus if Hereward were a member of this prominent family, his parentage would not be a matter of record. Some modern research suggests him to have been Anglo-Danish with a Danish father, Askatil, since Brand is also a Danish name. It makes sense that the abbot may have been Askatil's brother. Hereward's apparent ability to call on Danish support may also support this theory. Hereward's birth is conventionally dated as 1035 sixths because the jester Herewardi indicates that he was first exiled in 1054 in his 18th year. However, since the account in the jester of the early part of his exile contains fantastic elements, it is hard to know if it is trustworthy. Peter Rex, in his 2005 biography of Hereward, points out that the campaigns in which he is reported to have fought in the neighborhood of Flanders seem to have begun around 1063 and suggests that, if he was 18 at the time of his exile, he was born in 1044 fifths. But this would be based on the assumption that the early part of the story is largely fictitious. His place of birth is supposed to be in or near born in Lincolnshire. The Doomsday Book shows that a man named Hereward held lands in the parishes of Whittam on the hill and Barholm with Stowe in the southwestern corner of Lincolnshire as a tenant of Peterborough Abbey. Prior to his exile, Hereward had also held lands as a tenant of Croyland Abbey at Crowland, eight miles east of Market Deeping in the neighbouring Fenland. In those times it was a boggy and marshy area, since the holdings of abbeys could be widely dispersed across parishes. The precise location of his personal holdings is uncertain but was certainly somewhere in South Lincolnshire. Exile According to the jester Herewardy, Hereward was exiled at the age of 18 for disobedience to his father and disruptive behavior, which caused problems among the local community. He was declared an outlaw by Edward the Confessor. The jester tells various stories of his supposed adventures as a young man while in exile in Cornwall, Ireland and Flanders. These include a fight with an enormous bear and the rescue of a Cornish princess from an unwanted marriage. Many historians consider these tales to be largely fictions. Having arrived in Flanders he joined an expedition against Skaldamari land. Historian Elizabeth Van Houts considers this aspect of the story to be consistent with evidence concerning expeditions led by Robert the Frisian on behalf of his father Baldwin V, Count of Flanders in the early 1060s. Peter Rex also accepts that these events probably occurred. At the time of the Norman invasion of England, he was still in exile in Europe working as a successful mercenary for Baldwin V. According to the jester he took part in tournaments in Cambrai. At some point in his exile Hereward is said to have married Turfida, a Gallo-Germanic woman from a wealthy family in St. Omer. She is said in the jester to have fallen in love with him before she met him, having heard of his heroic exploits. Return to England Hereward returned to England in late 1069 or 1070. 
The jester says that he discovered that his family's lands had been taken over by the Normans and his brother killed with his head then placed on the spike at the gate to his house. Hereward took revenge on the Normans who killed his brother while they were ridiculing the English at a drunken feast. He allegedly killed 15 of them with the assistance of one helper. He then gathered followers and went to Peterborough Abbey to be knighted by his uncle, Abbot Brand. He returned briefly to Flanders to allow the situation to cool down before returning to England. The jester claims that William de Warren's brother-in-law Frederick's war to kill Hereward, but Hereward outwitted him and killed him. Since Hereward's killing of Frederick is also attested in the Independent Hyde Chronicle, this event is regarded as almost certainly true. William himself later pursued Hereward, but Hereward supposedly unhorsed him with an arrow shot. In 1070 Hereward certainly participated in the anti-Norman insurrection centred on the Isle of Ely. In 1069 or 1070 the Danish king Swain Estrithson sent a small army to try to establish a camp on the Isle of Ely. Hereward appears to have joined them. Hereward stormed and sacked Peterborough Abbey in company with local men and Swain's Danes. While the jester says this was after the main battle at Ely, the Peterborough Chronicle says it was before. The historical consensus is that the Chronicle's account is most accurate. His justification is said to have been that he wished to save the Abbey's treasures and relics from the rapacious Normans led by the new Norman abbot who had ousted his uncle Brand. According to the jester he returned the treasures looted from the abbey after having a vision of St. Peter. However, the Peterborough Chronicle says that the treasure was carried off to Denmark. Hereward was then joined by a small army led by Morker, the Saxon former Earl of Northumbria who had been ousted by William. William sent an army to deal with the rebels. In 1071, Hereward and Morca were forced to retreat to their stronghold and made a desperate stand on the Isle of Ely against the conqueror's rule. Both the jester Herewardi and the Liber Aliensis claim that the Normans made a frontal assault, aided by a huge, mile-long timber causeway, but that this sank under the weight of armour and horses. The Normans then tried to intimidate the English with a witch, who cursed him from a wooden tower. But Hereward managed to set a fire that toppled the tower with the witch in it. The jester includes other fantastical tales about Hereward's prowess, including disguising himself as a potter to spy on the king and escaping from captivity. It is said that the Normans, probably led by one of William's knights named Belisius, then bribed the monks of the island to reveal a safe route across the marshes, resulting in Elias' capture. Morca was taken and imprisoned, but Hereward is said to have escaped with some of his followers into the wild Fenland and to have continued his resistance. This escape is noted in all the earliest surviving sources. There is extant evidence for an ancient earthwork south of Aldrith at the junction of the Old Fen Causeway and Iram Drove. This circular feature, known as Belsa's Hill, is a potential site for a fort, built by William, from which to attack Ely and Hereward. There were perhaps as few as four causeways onto the Isle itself, with this being the southerly route from London and the likely route of William's army. Later life there are conflicting accounts about Hereward's life after the fall of Ely. The jester Hereward says Hereward attempted to negotiate with William but was provoked into a fight with a man named Dogger. The fight led to his capture and imprisonment. His followers, however, liberated him when he was being transferred from one castle to another. Hereward's former jailer persuaded the king to negotiate once more, and he was eventually pardoned by William and lived the rest of his life in relative peace. It also says that he married a second wife after Turfida entered a convent. She is said to have been called Altruder and was the widow of Earl Dolphin. Geoffrey Guimar, in his Estoire des Engelis, says instead that Hera would live for some time as an outlaw in the Fen, but that as he was on the verge of making peace with William, he was set upon and killed by a group of Norman knights. It is also possible that Hereward received no pardon and went into exile, never to be heard from again. This was in fact the fate of many prominent Englishmen after the conquest.
Ogre, either the person Herowood is supposed to have fought or an heir, appears to have taken over his lands. Joseph Harrop in his 1764 A New History of England, suggests that after his escape from Ely, Herowood went to Scotland. Epithet, The Wake the epithet, The Wake, is first attested in the late 14th century Peterborough Chronicle, ascribed by its first editor, Joseph Spark, to the otherwise unknown John of Peterborough. There are two main theories as to the origin of the tag. The usual interpretation is that it means the watchful. In Charles Kingsley's novel, Herowood acquires it when, with the help of his servant Martin Lightfoot, he foils an assassination attempt during a hunting party by a group of knights jealous of his popularity. A second theory is that the name was given to him by the Wake family, the Norman landowners who gained Herowood's land in Bourne, Lincolnshire, after his death, to imply a family connection and therefore legitimise their claim to the land. The family claimed descent from Herowood's daughter by his second wife, Altruda. Historicity the existence of Herowood is not generally disputed, though the story of his life, especially as recounted in the Jester, almost certainly contains exaggerations of his deeds and some outright fictions. Hugh M. Thomas argues that the Jester is intended to be an entertaining story about an English hero, creating a fantasy of successful resistance to the Normans. Herowood is always motivated by honest emotions and displays chivalric values in his warfare, unlike his enemies. His supreme manly prowess is constantly emphasized. Potentially discreditable episodes such as the looting of Peterborough are excused, and even wiped out by stories such as the vision of St. Peter leading him to return the loot. The fact of Herowood's participation in the events at Ely is attested in early documents such as the Annal for 1071 in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. Another text of the Chronicle also tells of his involvement in the looting. Early sources say nothing about him other than the fact that he was at Ely and that he led the last band of resistors. L'Histoire des Engels says that he had a noble family, but is unspecific. His alleged genealogy is given in the Jester and the later Historia Croylandensis, though with some variations. By the 15th century, the Wake family were claiming descent from him and elevating his ancestry by asserting that he was the son of Leo Frick, Earl of Mercia and Lady Godiva. It is possible that some of the stories about Herowood mutated into tales about Robin Hood or influenced them. Herowood nevertheless remained a minor figure until the Victorian period, when the idea of native Anglo-Saxon heroism became popular. Charles Kingsley's 1865 novel Herowood the Wake, the last of the English elevated Herowood to the position of a national hero. It drew on the theory that traditional English liberties were destroyed by the Norman yoke, an idea earlier popularized in Walter Scott's novel Ivanhoe. Both novels helped create the image of a romantic Anglo-Saxon England violated by Norman tyranny. After its publication, Herowood appears in numerous popular historical works. Legacy HMS Herowood was an H-class destroyer of the Royal Navy commissioned on 9 December 1936. Herowood is the motto of No. 2 Squadron RAF. They are based at RAF Marum in Norfolk and the crest contains a wake knot. BR Standard Class 7 Locomotive No. 70037 carried the name Herowood the Wake. There is a long-distance footpath through the Cambridgeshire Fenland from Peterborough to Ely called the Herowood Way. From 1980 to 2009, a local radio station broadcasting from Peterborough was called Herowood FM before being relaunched as Hart Peterborough. When East Cambridgeshire District Council transferred its housing stock, it created a housing association called Herowood Housing to receive the accommodation. This was later taken over by Sanctuary Housing to form Sanctuary Herowood. Hampstead has a preparatory school for boys called Herowood House School. In popular culture, folk tales and fiction 19th century The Camp of Refuge by Charles McFarlane, pub. 1844. Thomas Bullfinch wrote about Herowood the Wake in his work. 
The Age of Fable, or Stories of Gods and Heroes. Charles Kingsley's novel, Hereward the Wake. Last of the English, is a highly romanticized account of Hereward's exploits and makes him the son of Earl Leofric of Mercia and the ancestor of the family of Wake. 20th century, Mother Hodge, The Fifth Folktale Story and New Tales of Robin Hood, by Donald Sudderby, Pub. 1950, wherein, Hereward the Ever Wakeful, is a boyhood idol of Robin Hood, and Robin is later rewarded with Hereward's sword and red rose. The Last Englishman, The Story of Hereward the Wake, by Hebe Wee Nelson, Pub. 1952. Jack Trevor Story wrote a long dramatized life of Hereward for one of Tom Boardman's 1950s boys annuals, Man with a Sword, by Henri Treese, 1962, published by the Bodley Head, London. Hereward is the hero of the story. In the first episode he is the champion of the Empress Gunhilda of Germany, and at the end his life extends past the death of William I. The 1985 Doctor Who annual included a short story entitled, The Real Hereward. The premise of this story is that Hereward was an alias adopted by King Harold after surviving the Battle of Hastings. The Saxon Tapestry, by Sile Rice, a historical fantasy. Pub. Hodder and Stoughton, 1991. Hereward the Wake makes a significant appearance in Keeper of the Crystal Spring by Naomi and Deborah Baltuck, a historical romance adventure set in a predominantly Saxon community 20 years after the Battle of Hastings. 21st Century Cold Heart, Cruel Hand. A novel of Hereward the Wake is a novel by Lawrence J. Brown. An Endless Exile, by Mary Lancaster, is a historical novel based on Hereward's life. Hereward is portrayed as a prototype Robin Hood, but also as a drug-taking, psychopathic arsonist. In Mike Ripley's novel The Legend of Hereward the Wake, Brain Biter, The Saga of Hereward the Wake, by Jack Ogden, Pub. 2007. The Legend of Hereward, a novel of Norman England, 1063-1071 AD, by Mike Ripley, Pub. 2007. Marcus Pitcaird Lee's epic Hereward trilogy, Hereward, The Fury of the Northmen, and Hereward, Doom of Battle, incorporates legendary figures from the same region such as Tom Hickathrift, The Toad Men of Wisbeach, Black Shuck, and The Phantom Knight of Wandlebury. Conquest by Stuart Binns is an historical novel covering Hereward's life in dramatic and bloody detail. It takes significant dramatic liberties, projecting that Hereward later took the alias Godwin of Ely and worked his way to the head of Emperor Alexius's Byzantine forces before taking part in the First Crusade to become a lead strategist of the Prince's Crusade and advisor of Bowman of Taranto. He appears thus in the sequel, Crusade. James Wilde has written Hereward, The Devil's Army and End of Days chronicling his period in England. The fourth in the series, Wolves of New Rome, takes Hereward and his companions, expelled from England, to Constantinople, meeting new friends and old enemies. The adventure continues in The Immortals. Man Booker Prize long listed The Wake by Paul King's North is a historical novel written in a shadow version of Old English telling the story of another resistance fighter in the Fens whose actions are regularly compared to Hereward. Fen Wolf by S. Pitt is a historical novel chronicling events between 1066 and 1072 as told by Hereward to Leofric the Deacon. In this version, after joining the rebel force in Scotland, Hereward is handed over to the Normans as part of King Malcolm's peace negotiations. Broadcasting and film The BBC made a 16-episode TV series in 1965 entitled Hereward the Wake, based on Kingsley's novel. Hereward was portrayed by actor Alfred Lynch. However, not one episode of this BBC series has survived, according to the archive records. Hancock's Half Hour, Sid James claims Hereward stayed at Hancock's house as a ploy to get the house renovated by the National Trust. Brian Blessed portrayed Hereward in the TV drama Blood Royal, William the Conqueror, BBC TV series, Horrible Histories, Series 4, Episode 10, 
features the siege of Ili including the deployment of a witch as a weapon against the Saxons. On 26 December 2012 BBC Radio 4 broadcast the story of Heroward as a comic afternoon play, produced by Julia McKenzie, written by David Reed and Humphrey Kerr, and performed by the Penny Dreadfuls. Music progressive rock band Pink Floyd referred to Heroward in the track, Let There Be More Light in which a psychedelic vision at Milden Hall reveals the living soul of Heroward the Wake. Lyrics by Roger Waters. He appears in the lyrics of the 1970 track Darkness by progressive group Van Der Graaf Generator from their album The Least We Can Do Is Wave To Each Other. Lyrics by Peter Hamill. Heroward is the subject of the track A Rebel of the Marshlands by metal band Forefather in the 2005 album Ours is the Kingdom.